Hey, this is Dan Blewett. This is the start of my 16th week uh, post Tommy John, and this is a big milestone because I just visited Dr. Kremchek. Um, took a weekend trip to Cincinnati, and uh, so we discussed my plan. Obviously, I was expecting to get cleared for throwing, and what he said was, you know, with your goal not to necessarily come back this year, and this being your re revision uh, elbow surgery, he said I recommend that we wait until January for you to start throwing, which is puts you in that five to six month range. Um, and I agree that was a sensible thing to do. He said, you know, the ligament solidifies more between months four to six. And he said, you know, you need every chance that, um, any, every advantage that we can get, you know, to make sure that you come back from this one, uh, being that it's your second go around. So with that in mind, I mean, that's a very sensible approach. So that's what we're going to do. Um, he gave me the throwing program, so I'm going to start that in January, and I'll see him again in, uh, I guess, middle of March or the beginning of March. So I'm going to post the throwing program that I got on my website. Probably do that in the next couple of days or so. You know, today's November 20th, um, and it looks like it's going to take about six months to get to uh, full speed or so via that, which is pretty typical from what I've seen. Uh, I also have Dr. Andrews' program, so I might post both of those on the same day just to uh, compare and contrast the two two protocols from two very successful uh, orthopedic firms. So um, other things I asked him um, and the physical therapist who uh, spoke with me was A, um, when can kind I of start doing push-ups? He said immediately it's fine. Um, obviously just start uh, easy and go bound. So I go, we'll start with uh, high bar push-ups which simulate a wall push-up essentially and I'll lower the incline until I'm doing floor push-ups. I'm easily strong enough to do them now, but I'm going to progressively load my, my elbow as far as they um, are adding the, the push-up. So they said guidelines, though, don't go way back here. They said keep your angle at 90 degrees relative to your body and your elbow. So I'm going to buy that. Um, so they said, you know, if you do bench pressing or something, which we don't necessarily recommend, they say make sure you're using like a board, something like that, where you're limiting your range of motion, keeping in that 90 degree range. Um, they said pull-ups, no pull-ups uh, until year one, which I really, to be honest, disagree with, um, but I'm going to abide it anyway. What they said was, you know, and I said, well, here's my question. I said, I'm clear to row, correct? She said, yeah. So I said, well, I've been doing vertical rows, horizontal rows, low rows, different angles of row. I said, I've been progressing slowly. Um, and that's okay, right? He said, yeah. So I said, so then once I get to the point where I can row my own, the equivalent of my body weight on the cable machine, how is that different from a pull-up? And she didn't really answer. She said, you know what? Pull-ups are not essential to you throwing a baseball and you getting back on the mound. So don't worry so much about it. I said, you know what? Okay, that's fine. So I personally believe that if you progressively load, um, just like you do with the throwing program and all rehab in general, the tissue should develop tolerance to that progressive loading. However, if they say don't do it, I'm just going to say screw it. I'm just going to abide by it because, again, she's right. She's 100% right. Um, me bench pressing a huge amount of weight or doing a ton of push-ups or doing full range of motion push-ups or doing pull-ups, it really is largely irrelevant to my baseball career. So um, now is that irrelevant to a kid who's weak and has very little body strength? No, he needs to do chin-ups and pull-ups to get uh, that relative body strength up. However, for me, I'm doing tons of other things. My, I'm plenty strong, so it's really not that important. So I'm going to wait till year one per their instructions and can the pull-ups. I also asked them about holding weight. I said, you know what, I'd be able to deadlift, uh, do heavy farmer's carries, how much can I hold in my hands? And they said I would limit it to 50 pounds within the first year. So, again, I think if I could hold 25 pounds today and 30 pounds a week from today with no problems, and then 35, and then 40, and then 50, and then 55, and then 60. It's hard to say that, you know, hey, if I can hold 55 today, you know, a week from now, if I've been working on it slowly, why couldn't my elbow handle 60 pounds? And then if you keep adding slowly, why couldn't it adjust to those loads? I'm sure that it could. My first go around, I was deadlifting 450 at around the year mark. Now, did that, is that what blew my elbow up? I don't believe so. I didn't have any problems for the first three years anyway, so it's, it's doubtful. And I always I'd progressively loaded it. But nonetheless, 
that's what they told me to do. That's what I'm going to do. First go around, they gave me no guidelines whatsoever on any of that stuff. So I'm just going to stick to what my doctor says, regardless of my own personal philosophies and what even I think makes logical sense. Because, again, they're right. Me deadlifting is not super relevant to my sport. It's something I enjoy doing. It's good training. But at the same time, there are a million uh, hip-dominant moves, movements that I can do. I'm going to squat and squat and squat. Um, do I really need to deadlift? No, I don't. Do I really need a farmer's walk with 200 pounds? No, I don't. I can do other things to get my grip strength up without straining my elbow if they say it's going to strain it. So there you have it. I'm also cleared to squat with a straight bar. So as long as I keep my elbows underneath the bar, which is a necessity in a, a strong squat anyway. Because if you squat, you're supposed to be pulling down the bar, squeezing it, activating your lats and your upper back. So I'm pretty pumped about that, to be honest with you. I just got a new safety squat bar. I have the cameraed bar. I've been front squatting like crazy. Uh, but now I can back squat and do good mornings with a regular bar, so that's cool. Um, other than that, that's about it. That was the that was the gist of the talk, so it was cool to get clear for do some new stuff in the gym. Um, a little disappointing to not start throwing, but at the same time, I believe it's the right thing for me to do. And it's really only six weeks away anyway. It's six more weeks, big deal. Things have been flying by so far. Uh, you know, I'll pick up the ball in early January and get going from there. So that won't really be the six-month mark. It'll be about the five-month mark when I get going. But I think that's 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 a good way to go about it. He said, you know, I think you'll be fine if you were to start throwing today. He said, your elbow looks good. Uh, he said, but you know what? It does solidify between months four and six. gets a little stronger. gets a little more resilient. So let's just, you know give you the advantage if you don't have a, a really strict timeline so there we have it so that's my update from uh, my my visit to Cincinnati and my 16 week follow-up so probably won't be doing these week these updates quite as often for the next six weeks maybe every other week because I think they're kind of boring to be honest there's not a whole lot new going on just me lifting weights but once throwing does start in January I'm gonna definitely get pick up and uh, get more in depth so there you have it